Good morning. Um, I'm Lisa Maria Neudert. I'm with the Oxford Internet Institute. I'm a researcher there and also a DPhil candidate. And I am doing work there with the project on computational propaganda, which is a project which is looking specifically into how algorithms and big data are being used to spread misinformation and to spread propaganda online. Um, we are looking at misinformation from various different angles. We have looked into how misinformation is impacting elections. We have looked into the different threat, act threat actors. We have looked into what their motivations are. And over the past year, we have also begun to look into countermeasures. So the good news is it may have taken a while, but increasingly we see some movement in that space. We see some countermeasures emerging um, in industry, in civil society, and another big field, of course, is regulation. Um, I personally have often felt a little bit indecisive about um, regulation and its efforts, specifically on misinformation. Because on the one hand, I think that um, in many ways we're probably past the point of self-regulation, also as Renee pointed out, in many ways um, where we see a couple of social media companies trying to get their ducks in order. But on the other hand, a lot of the um, regulation that we currently see emerging are not really solutions designed to tackle a specific issue, but are what I would call solutionism. Solutionism in a way of proposing regulation just for the sake of proposing something to do against misinformation, or even worse, countries and governments that are taking this as a moment to really tighten their control over information on the internet and the content that is being posted there. With that, I actually want to take you to my home country, Germany. Germany is one of the very first countries to regulate in the space. They have introduced something that is called the Network Enforcement Act. Trust me, German, it sounds way more intimidating. Netzwerkdurchsetzungsgesetz. That's one word. And uh, that was introduced in January 2018, and it holds social networking companies liable for the content that users are posting there, or otherwise is imposing fines on those social networking companies. <coughs> What that translates to in practice and what that looks like is exactly that. Um, that is a so-called deletion center in Essen with um, about 500 people, soon to be 1,000 people, that are reviewing content that is being posted to Facebook every day, every hour, and are deciding whether it's content that should get deleted and should get taken down. So that is also worth pausing. This is trained staff that is doing that. It is not lawyers, it is not regulators, it is not somebody from a government agency, but that is trained staff from social media companies. So what is the kind of content that they're taking down? The law originally was designed to be against hate speech and also against fake news. And um, all the content that is taken down is illegal in terms of what is illegal within the German law, and also law that is already has been existing. So that, for example, is libel, that is slander, that is defamation, but also various other forms of um, hate speech and misinformation. It's interesting because since that law was introduced in January 2018, there are also a couple of cases where content disappeared that probably should not have been deleted by any standards of freedom of speech. Uh, one example that rose to prominence was um, a German satire magazine that uh, was criticizing a racist statement that a right-wing politician had made. And in that criticism was actually um, referencing part of that statement. And then that got taken down and Twitter had suspended their account for a day. One thing that I really like about this law is that it comes with a biannual report of the type of content that it gets taken down. And uh, the first report only just came out. I brought a couple of numbers which you are probably not going to be able to read. <laughs> Um, but um, this is stating um, how many complaints users have filed because they thought something was illegal and then how many um, pieces of content have been taken down. And there are sort of three takeaways from these numbers that I'm showing you here. The first takeaway is that this shows that users to some extent really are media liter literate. It's between 10 to 45 percent of the content where they thought it was illegal, that social networks also decided, yes, it is indeed illegal, which really shows that users have some form of capability to spot content that probably is very hateful, that is misinformation, and that is against the law. 
the other thing that is really interesting is if you take a look at Facebook here, you can see it's just three digit numbers. And that is not because Facebook in Germany is a great space for genuine democratic discourse, but it is actually um, because Facebook has made it really difficult to spot um, uh, that flagging tool. And then the, yes, and then the third thing, um, it's really, it's massive numbers that are taken down. Yes, it's millions of posts that are generated, but still, those are quite substantial numbers of content that are disappearing. And they are disappearing without any legal oversight, without any judges at the situation present. So I'll run through the next slide quickly because I'm already running out of time, but to look back at to what the problem is that we're actually trying to regulate and that we're concerned with. On the one hand, yes, we have algorithms that um, and big data that enable computational propaganda, that enable the spread of misinformation. But on the other hand, we also see these kind of strategies really flock into the mainstream, both into the media and into politics. And then the third problem is the solutionism that I've just said that is emerging. So that is actually regulation and also other kinds of solutions that are really tightening the freedom of expression, the freedom of speech that we do have on the internet. Um, the things that regulation can actually tackle and the things that regulators are really concerned with right now are on the one hand, yes, the spread of junk news misinformation, of course, foreign intellectual interference, bots, trolls, data-driven campaigns, and um, then also a lot of regulators are thinking about, okay, how can we look into journalism and media literacy and support that? And I think one of the questions that uh, we get asked a lot is, okay, then what should positive regulation actually look like? What, what should we do about this? And together with a colleague, Samantha Bradshaw, um, we got really interested in this um, topic and we reviewed regulation that already is existing out there. We've been looking into the top 100 countries, countries by um, population on the internet and have looked into what kind of regulation has emerged there. And um, this is the countries that we found where there is new regulation introduced since 2016, specifically addressing the spread of misinformation in relation to propaganda campaigns, in relation to foreign interference. So what's interesting, it's quite a broad geographical spread, and it's also democracies as well as countries that are perhaps less democratic. And um, we have tried to map and make sense of that a little bit. And we have looked into the measures and the different actors that are being addressed. And um, one of the things that we are seeing is that is often social media platforms are the target um, and how that is then looking like as we have, for example, data protection regulation, we have advertising transparency and content takedowns. The second group is citizen and media. That is, for example, media accreditation. For example, in uh, Tanzania, now if you're a blogger or a journalist, you actually have to get accredited by the media if you don't want your content to be deleted and you don't want to be fined. Um, and we have also controls and literacy. We have, um, of course, government inquiries, and we have security and defense monitoring, which is often done um, within the military. And then as the last group that are the target, we have offenders. And that is also quite interesting because um, on the one hand, um, we see criminalization. For example, um, we see fines, we see imprisonment. But what we see is that um, the criminalization is not just about countries that are or actors that are originating that content, but also that are sharing it. Um, so that is already illegal in, for example, countries like Vietnam and like Malaysia. Um, so we also try to think about what are the possible side effects of that kind of regulation. The first side effect, of course, is chilling effects on the freedom of speech, um, very much chilling effects where people are afraid to speak out or cannot speak out because their content is being deleted. Very interesting is that we have seen a learning curve for authoritarian regimes. For example, that German law that we just talked about has been copied by Russia and it also has been pointed to by Malaysian and by Vietnamese regulators that however are um, enforcing that law with a different democratic background and a different rule of law. Um, what we are also seeing is um, a 
many countermeasures that are actually addressing individual actors, individual pieces of content, rather than really looking into this big systemic problem that we're having that has to do with algorithms, that has to do with the way that information and its dynamics um, are happening in modern day age, and also has to do with um, our societies and our politics, of course. And the fourth sort of trend that we distinguished is that um, a lot of the tasks that perhaps should have been or in the past would have been with courts, with laws, with governments are now being outsourced to social media companies where they indeed get in that position where they're their purveyors of what is truth and what is not. And with that, I already come to the conclusion. Um, I really want you to understand that uh, the way that we're regulating will come with consequences and it also will inevitably come with unintended consequences. Um, I think it's a terrible idea not to regulate because we're afraid of unintended consequences, but I think for a lot of people that are sort of pointing to governments and to regulators to solve the problem overnight, um, it's not going to be as easy as that. And I think we need a long d discourse about um, how we're going to tackle that problem and how we're going to engage different stakeholders. And I hope we get to have some of that discussion in the workshops today.